NASCAR late models fire up in front of a packed house. 8,000 fans here at Santa Stash. Well, Jacques Villeneuve gets the win in that secured in place. No more autographs, Dave. It's time to get down to business. We'll ride on board with Don Thompson Jr. today. He hopes to get his year back on track starting right here in Santa Stash. There's Anthony Simone, and we'll also ride along with Jason White, who will start in 17th. Now let's take a look at today's lineup for the Type 250 from St. Estache. Sean Pohl, as we heard, is the 17 of DJ Kennington. Outside front row will be Don Thompson Jr. in the home hardware Chevy. Very native John Gaunt in the 12th car will start in third and Andrew Ranger in the 27. Outside of him in row number two. Row number three has Kerry Mix in the 02 and Scott Steckley in the Canadian Tire 22 will start in the outside of row three. Row four. Mark Dilley in the nine, and Jeff Lapsovich in the 23. Looking back to row number five, Anthony Simone, and there is Jacques Villeneuve in the seven. Row number six has Ron Beauchamp Jr. He's your points leader in the 60, and Dave Whitlock in the 39, won the first time out here at St. Estache. Jonathan Bouveret starts in the 41, and Ken Nunes in the 18, and then row number eight has Brad Graham in the 19, and Jason Hathaway in the three. Row number nine is Jason White all the way from BC in the 21. And then it's Derek White, uh, Quebec native in the 99. Andre Corsall drives the five and Dexter Stacy is in the 55. Row number 11 has Joey Hansen in the 40. And then Hugo Vanini in the 97 will round out the field. Well, we got trouble with the 21 car, Dave. It's not gonna fire up as the parade lap is carrying on here. They're gonna push it down to pit road and see what's wrong with that race car. Let's have a quick look inside. Oh, he's playing with the switches. Oh, we got some smoke underneath the dash. That's not good. Obviously, something going wrong with the electrics. Hopefully, the crew can jump in there and uh, rewire what they need to get them back in the field before we go to green. We're on board with Ron Beauchamp Jr., that Mopar Dodge. Beauchamp starting in the 11th position behind Jacques Villeneuve, and let's send it down trackside to our man, Todd. More news on today's event. A couple of quick stories just before we go green. The French-Canadian racing tradition continues. Jonathan Beauvret, a local track champion here at St. Eustache, also a provincial champion in today's field, running his first NASCAR Canadian Tire Series event. Quick to thank Alain Labrasse at this track, the owner and promoter of this event. Alain's so involved in racing that he's actually going to run the event as part of the nationwide racing weekend. Of course, he was a pretty good motorcycle racer in his day. Quick story as well, the 21 car of Jason White, the A&W car, an ignition wire problem. They're trying to fix it now, just before we go green. Oh, you can hear the motor come to life just in time, and he'll get that thing to the back of the pack. And it would have been heartbreaking to see him not be able to start this race, coming all the way from Sun Peaks, British Columbia, last year's Rookie of the Year in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series, looking to run strong here in 2009. All into turn three for the final time. We're coming to the green flag. Watch these guys go up through the gearbox. They'll be hustling for turn one. And watch Kennington and watch Thompson sitting on the front row. Now watch the flag stand as March Normando has the green flag in hand. It waves and we're underway here in the tie 250 in St. Estash. Down into turn one, DJ Kennington gets the jump. Oh, the 27 gets back in the back of Don Thompson. Around he goes. Oh, and Villanova takes him. Big Not problems. even a lap. Holy moly. Big problems for Don Thompson Jr., even bigger problems for Jacques Villeneuve, as it looks like Villeneuve was trying to thread the needle through there and big damage to the front of that tide for fusion heartbreak for the 1997 Formula One World Champion. Let's take another look at it. Down into turn one, they're side by side. The 27 just gives the four a little bit of a tap. Nowhere to go, there he is, wham, the seven's in there, and all the hoopla about Villeneuve being here to run a stock car is over in a very short period of time. Now on board with Thompson. A suspension damage, a lot of radiator damage on the seven. He'll probably be done for the night. And you got to feel bad for Vilda. It looked like the Red Sea parted in front of him as all the cars made their way around Thompson, and he was left there looking at the right or left front corner of that home hardware. Impala SS, the crew goes to work. They've got a lot of work to do. Sandy Hamilton throwing wrenches around. He's probably got to put a radiator in it, get rid of some of that duck work, and get him back in the hunt. He'll be in it for the points, and the points only back under green. He's right again with DJ Kennington, John Gaunt on the outside this time. Andrew Ranger tucks down in behind the 17 Castro Dodge Avenger as Kennington will lead them down the back chute for the first time. Wow, smooth. And it's sliding in the overdrive. DJ hauls it off into three, gets the left rear into the oil dry and slides high. Spotter Alan Pinson doing a great 
job keeping his driver safe early on here at St. Eustache. One driver in trouble, it's Anthony Simone, and Todd standing behind his pit. Crown Modular team scrambles over the wall with the jack and a new right rear tire. Anthony Simone felt it going down as they approach the green flag, now making the stop to make the change. And he goes two laps down as the leaders go by on this very, very short track. You really don't have time to make a green flag pit stop without obvious repercussions. Wow, this racetrack is very slick after that first lap altercation. Kerry Mix got real loose going into turn one and two. Kerry Mix loose. It looked like it took a few laps for that 17 car. DJ Kennington to get sunk into the racetrack. And here comes Scott Steckley taking a look at the 12. High-tech drilling Dodge Avenger of John Gunn. Uh, really good to see Johnny Gott running up front. We know he's a good shoe. You know he's got good equipment. Just good to see him up front here. Yeah, he's only been out to one other show so far this year. It was down in Delaware, and he ran in the top five nearly all night long before having a motor break in that car, so you know he's capable of running up front. Absolutely. Battle for eighth now as we ride on board with your points leader, Ron Beauchamp Jr., the Mopar Dodge. That's the 23 uh, laps for his car right in front of him. Remember last time they were here, that car was brand new and went home in a basket. Just a lot of spotter traffic, a lot of radio chatter here at St. Stash. Such a short track, the drivers need to know where the other drivers are. Scott Steckley puts that tow truck in a box. Canadian Tire Dodge Avenger just noses it underneath. John Gott going into one, and he will pick up the spot. He's going to drag a lot mixed with him. Ah, uh, great action all through the field here. Take a look at this. All these short track guys grew up in the Barry area and stuff. You got Mixie, you got Dilly, you got Johnny Gaunt. They've been to these short tracks before. that John Gull wanted to hear. You're clear as he'll pull down in front of the 23 Tim Horton Chevy of Jeff Lapsovitz. So Gull will get back in line as the leaders start to work lap traffic. Andrew Rager has some company, though, and it's a 17 of Kennington on his back bumper. But again, Kennington slips up in one and two. Well, DJ's car only wants to work right in the bottom. We had a lap car in there. I don't think there was any contact. Just DJ gave him lots of room, got that right rear out in the, in the dirt again, and lost it some ground. The 55 of Dexter stays the 97 of Hugo Vanini and the 99 of Derek White all having a battle of their own towards the tail of the field. There is the 55 of uh, Dexter Stacy right in front of the 17 of DJ Kennington as Kennington will go around on the high side. But down pit side, Todd Lewis is standing by with a pretty disillusioned number seven driver. Todd? Shock Villeneuve, disappointment I can tell on your face. This was short rat track racing, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's very disappointing because you feel like you've lost the whole weekend doing nothing, so uh, that's a little bit frustrating. But uh, to not even do one lap, that's uh, mostly when the car is competitive. Uh, we knew we would have been fighting at the front with the team, so uh, that's, that's just annoying. Will we see you back in this series again before the end of the year? Ah, uh, well, today today doesn't really push me into positive idea about do, doing this, uh, this again, but... Uh, you never know. I was doing this for fun uh, because it's next to home. Hopefully we'll see you back. Thanks, Jacques. And it looks like Villeneuve will actually race again. He'll be at Trois Rivières for Dave Jacobs Racing in August. That's something to look forward to. Absolutely. We get a good look out the front of the 17 car, DJ Kennington. He slid back to third behind the 22 of Scott Steckley. We got trouble. It's the three car, Jason Hathaway in the snap-on Dodge Avenger as he loops it up in quarter number two. So Hathaway will get it going, but that'll draw another caution here at St. Estash. Now let's take a look at the replay. Down into turn one, a little bit of hot racing going on. He's on the outside. Oh, three wide, and he gets tagged by the 41. The 41 of Jonathan Boomerett gets into the back of the three cars. Jason White comes down pit lane and gets some service. A little bit of handiwork on the right front fender on the a and number 21. So Andrew Ranger leads here at St. Estash with 25 laps down. There's no secret to what makes a beautiful room. It's the right design and the perfect colors. Colors that reflect who you are. Rich, luxurious colors specifically designed to remain beautiful for years. Designer series paint with ceramic microspheres is more scrubbable, more stain resistant, more durable. For fabulous results, use premium designer series paint by Beauty Tone. Colors for living. Homeowners, helping homeowners. Only at Home Hardware and Home Hardware Building Center. Rule number 32, live the dream. Find out how at buttcamp.ca. 
Must be 19 or older, no purchase necessary. Series presented by Mobile One. Andrew Rager leads the time 250 with the 2008 champion Scott Steckley line up in second. Oh, Steckley jumped the cones on the restart. Let's see if NASCAR makes a call. There's restart cones on the fence, Dave, and the leader cannot take off until he passes the cones. And Steckley was clearly on the throttle hard. So no doubt NASCAR will be taking a look at that just to make sure they don't have to take a look long. Actually, it's the black flag wave by Sean Gibbs, the flagman, to the 2008 champion, the 22 of Scott Steckley. He'll take a drive through penalty. Well, at least it's just a drive through Dave. It's not a stop and go. And he is the leader right now, so he should be able to get the pit road clean and quick. And there's a lot of racing left to go here. 219 laps left to be completed as we take a look at a battle for six spot with a 60 of Ron Beauchamp Jr. battling to the inside of that 12 car of John Gunn. And so shaping up for the lead as there goes Steckley for his drive through penalty. And here comes Mix for the lead. That's a, that's a pair of those new spec motors side by side down the front stretch. A brand new chassis for the 27 of Andrew Ranger as well as agonizingly slow the 22 of Scott Steckley rolls through pit lane. He will not go a lap down as he'll make it to the end of pit lane before the, the leaders come through. Johnny God struggling real hard to get around the outside of the 23 car. That's the 41 on the inside. That's another Dave Jacobs entry. And that's for seventh spot. Jonathan Boudreau in his first race here in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Wheeling a wonderful race up inside the top 10 with some of Canada's best short track racers. Absolutely, but he's got local knowledge here, and he's had lots of laps in other forms of motorsports. And this is a tricky track. St. Estache is one like no other in Canada. Local knowledge is a big help. Oh, it? it is so flat. You can miss the corner here, it's so easy. These cars are sprung so soft, you actually feel when you roll in the middle of the corner like the, the track is off camber. Really, it's just the car laying over on the right front, but it is really a tough racetrack to get a hold of. Challenge for the lead, Andrew Ranger on that white line, and he'll take over top spot as Gary Mix slots into second, on board with DJ Kennington. Well, keep an eye on DJ's hands down the back stretch, heading for three, and it'll really give you a good indication of how his car is handling. Nice, easy turn in. That car is not loose at all. That's just doing a nice job on corner entry. Is something up with the 0-2 of Kerry Mix? He seems to be slowing as DJ Kennington made it around on the outside to take over second as we look back to ninth spot between the 39 of Dave Whitlock and the 41 of Jonathan Boudreaux. Wow, Davey's doing a good job. Uncharacteristic, Dave won the last race here. He's a, a really talented veteran, but he's got the right front fender tore off, so obviously he's got into some traffic early on. Guys, the 0-2 of Kerry Mix is back up to speed again, and crew chief Claire Bartlett is as confused as any of us. Kerry is not saying anything on the radio, did not mention that he flipped ignition boxes, but missed a shift or something and slowed down, lost the lead, but he's back up to speed and fighting again. Uh, sitting in fifth spot, chasing that man, the 27 of Andrew Ranger, continues to lead the tie 250 here at Autodrome St. Estes. One driver is back in on track as the 95 of Anthony Simone, but many, many laps down. He had to change a broken axle. Now he's got to keep up a minimum speed, or else the black flag will come out from NASCAR. Again, we get a great onboard shot here with the 17 of DJ Kennington. Look, watch his hand work on the wheels. This car is handling really well. Nice and smooth on exit, so you know the car is not loose. Maybe a little bit of understeer on entrance by the amount he's turning the wheel. Now, here's a good look at Beauchamp as well. Oh, you can really hear that car spin the tires off the corner. I was just going to say, you can hear a little bit more wheel spin as we look at this battle for 12 between the 21 of Jason White and Kent Noon and the 18 riding on board with Jason White. Now take a look at his hands. Yeah, his car is a little bit loose. You see him correcting back to the right coming off the corner. So the, the tail end of the car is trying to come around. So he's putting in the, the steering wheel to keep it off the fence. So you can really get a feel for it off the sound of the engine as well. Kennington, for example, not spinning the tires too much. Have a listen. Listen to this. This is cool. That thing is stuck 
and Kennington's going to the front. As comparison, the Jason White number 21 car spinning the tires down the straightaway, so that makes a really big difference as Scott Stackley continues to work his way up through the field. Now in a battle for eighth spot with the 19 of Brad Graham. Whoa, we got one around us, smoke. It's the 21. Just as we were talking about a potentially loose race car, the A&W cruising it up. Number 21 and Jason White goes around, so he grabs a gear but caution out once again here in St. Estes. Oh, he was loose off of turn and forward, got down the bottom underneath the lap car, got boxed in and just had the power to keep it under the sand trap. He just punished that thing up through the gearbox. Smoke Joe and hanging on. It's pit stop time. A lot of cars down pit lane, including the 60 of Ron Beauchamp Jr. He's on the 9 of Mark Dilly. So is the 17 of DJ Kennington. Oh, the wedge adjuster going in the right rear. Could be the Panhard bar, but probably a turn of wedge. We got air pressure adjustments on that car, and we're getting chassis adjustments on the 39 of Dave Whitlock. They're all trying to figure out the perfect setup to catch that man, Andrew Ray Two year later. and discover how many ways there are to make your sandwich your way. Subway, think fresh, eat fresh. We torture tested two cars to prove a point about maximum horsepower. The black car with Castrol Syntec, the red, the leading conventional oil. In torture tests, Castrol Syntec 5W30 maintained maximum horsepower longer. Conventional oil got smoked. Don't you use conventional oil? Not anymore. Want more proof? Go to CastrolSyntec.com. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. Sean Gibbs prepares to let the field loose once again here for race number four of the 2009 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. It's restart number two of the Time 250 here on lap 89. And Ranger gets off the mark real strong. He'll lead him down the backstretch, but the 22 of Steckley's right there hunt them down. Brad Graham didn't stop, nor did the 22 of Steckley, and that pushes those two cars towards the front of the field. You remember Steckley had that jump not too long ago, but he's back up towards the front right now, chasing your leader, the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Well, his crew chief made a real good call there. Get the track position back early on in the race by not stopping and hoping there's a caution not too far down the road so they can come and get their fuel and tires. Well, one driver who did stop made some adjustments, the Castrol Syntec Dodge Adventure of DJ Kennington. You remember how strong that car was, but look at Steckley now for the lead on the inside of the tie for Fusion of Andrew Ranger. So Ranger will slip to second. Steckley, your new leader. Whoa, we got one around. That's gone. He's been around backwards. God's been around backwards, and it looks like somebody has gotten into him, crushing that rear bumper cover on the high-tech boulder like number 12. Caution obviously coming out once again. We'll take another look. Oh, it was the 21 clipped the back end as he was spun around backwards in turn two. And it looks like the 0-2 of Kerry Mix might have had a hand in that one, but damage doesn't appear too severe on the number 12 as Don Jacobson and crew go to work. Some right side tires for John Conn. So with this downtime, we'll throw to this week's Wheel and Engineering Insider Report. NASCAR continues to look for ways to improve the safety of these race cars. All new cars that are manufactured and all older cars have been retrofitted to add some additional safety measures. The roll cage bars that surround the driver in the cockpit have been extended all the way back into the trunk area and they're anchored just an inch behind the fuel cell. In addition, another safety bar has been added between those two extended bars to help protect the fuel cell. On these short tracks, drivers are literally bumping to try 
try to improve their position. If there is a hard impact and the car trying to improve its position comes through the fiberglass, what's designed to happen is the front end of that car will ride up over this new safety bar and protect the fuel check valves. It keeps the fuel inside the car and the driver safe. Well, that's right, Todd. The innovations of safety are great. Even though we don't run excess of 150 miles an hour, it's still nice to have all that protection because the only thing that ever scared me as a driver was fire. Absolutely. As we go back to green here at St. Stash and Scott Steckley once again with a big jump on the outside. Here comes Andrew Ranger now down low, looking to take over the lead down the back chute. Wow, oh, the 22 touched. drove it in there hard, Davey, for sure. But the bottom is the fastest way around on this little flat racetrack. Andrew Ranger power slides it off of quarter four and into top spot once again. These two cars seem to be the class of the field in the early going here in the Tide 250. Uh, and Steckley pulled the crossover move down the bottom, but Ranger hammered the door shut. So Steckley tucks in behind the 27. Ron Beauchamp Jr. goes crossways in the whole car dodge off of four. And he has to dive to the inside to hold off a hard charging 17 to DJ Kennington. And then Dilly gets into the back of Kennington. And up front, there it is, that dodge horsepower. Steckley down to the bottom of turn three. He's going to force Ranger up into that second group. And he takes the spot off of four. Look at how well that car sticks. The 22 is absolutely straight coming off the corner. Whereas the 27 of Andrew Ranger a little bit crooked. As the 19 of Brad Graham, the 23 of Jeff Lapsovich battle side by side, seventh spot up for grabs here on the racetrack. There's great racing all over this racetrack. The top 10 is just right there. We got cars sideways, inside, outside. This is one awesome night of racing. Keep an eye on that Dickies Dodge, though, of Dave Whitlock, a Wiley veteran. If you remember back to the opening race of the season, it wasn't until late in the going that he took over on top spot and went on to win. Ronnie Beauchamp Jr. Great work by the spotters. That was Ron Beauchamp Sr. telling Ronnie that DJ was in there and then told him everything was looking good. But it all got set up by Ronnie getting on the throttle early. That car got a little loose on him. DJ was able to get down the bottom and fill the hole. And for, oh, the 21 around for the third time here today at St. Eustache. AW number 21 in Paula SS of Jason White loops it again up at one and two as the nine car, the Leland Industries, Dodge Adventure, Mark Dillies down the pits. Wow, that looks like gear oil run on the ground. This place is very hard on transmission and gears because they run so much gear here. Probably a 620, 630. A lot of stress on the drive line here, same as Dash. Hard break for them, and he was in fourth. DJ Kennington getting service. Scott Steckley is your new leader here at St. Dash. Rule number 32, live the dream. Find out how at budcamp.ca. Must be 19 or older, no purchase necessary. We torture tested two cars to prove a point about maximum horsepower. The black car with Castrol Syntec, the red, the leading conventional oil. In torture tests, Castrol Syntec 5W30 maintained maximum horsepower longer. Conventional oil got smoked. Don't you use conventional oil? Not anymore. Want more proof? Go to CastrolSyntec.com. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. Ain't that precious. Detailing your car with the same stuff Gramps used to use. You need a walker there? Or are you ready for some voodoo ride? We're talking ruthless, clean, and record time. Premium stuff from the ultimate car guy, Dale Jr. That ride's gonna be so full of shine, it'll burn your retina and give you a sunburn. Fasten your seatbelt, sweetheart. This ain't no pony ride. Available at Walmart. Engine Health Service is more than an oil change. It cleans out your engine and helps prevent problems. Only at Canadian Tire. The number 22 Canadian Tire tow truck in a box Dodge of Scott Steckley leads the Tide 250 here at race number four of the 2009 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. It's restart number five here on lap 123. 
down into turn one. So, oh, a lap car coming out of the pit. That was deadly. Anyway, down the back stretch, the 22 continues to lead. Ranger hanging tough on the outside. Graham's going to get a look at second place. And out on the high tech well drilling, number 12 of John Gaunt back up towards the front of the field as Andrew Ranger slips and slides to the outside. Brad Graham's going to take advantage of the 19 as with the home hardware halfway update. The four leaders so far, five cautions have slowed the field for a total of 23 laps. And there we've got trouble in the front. Graham and Ranger go around. You can almost see that one building up down the back stretch. You could smell it in the air off of turn two as they race for the same piece of real estate heading for turn three. Boy, Brad Graham's going to be enemy number one as he drives past this huge crowd here at St. Estash. I can imagine fists will be shaking. And they are as Ranger drives by and so is Graham. Here's another look. Really just real hard racing. Brad Graham was down the bottom, drove into the corner, and you see the back of the car get loose on, on corner entry. He had to chase up the racetrack, and that made contact with the 27. Really wasn't malicious, just one of those good old racing things. Graham's in the pits, Todd's in the 27 pit. After wanting to come in earlier, Andrew Ranger finally called the pit road. Two right side tires for the number 27 tied car, and he'll return to the battle after that trouble coming into court number three. So Scott Steckley, still your leader. That'll put the 12 of John Gaunt up to second spot, restarting to the outside. Uh, Scott Steckley gets side-by-side -side restarts every single time. Green flag waves, and we're back underway. Uh, you can hear him come up through the gearbox down the front stretch. John Gaunt stuck out that treacherous outside lane. He's going to get free train by the 22, and here comes the 23. He's going to take a shot at it. Did you see Dave Whitlock get all kinds of loose off the two? That last time by, it's a good thing that back straightaway is just a short one. Gathers it back up and doesn't lose too many spots. But how about the 23, Jeff Lapsovich? You spoke about it earlier. That car went home in a box after race number one here at St. Estash. Lapsovich really turned things around. Oh, absolutely. That car has been down to Mike McCall's, got some new pieces and parts put on it, obviously, after the last time it was here. And he's doing a dynamite job here at St. Estash. Riding on board now with the Castrol Dodge of DJ Kennington. Really quiet on the on the steering wheel there. I mean, listen to DJ. He doesn't mash the gas pedal. He plays like this is early on in the race. You just feather the throttle, bring it nice and gentle coming up off the corner. Don't just mash it and spin the tires. He's looking for a third spot underneath the 23 of Jeff Lapsovich, the Tim Hortons Chevy and Paul SS. As we take a look back to Ron Beauchamp Jr. Dodgers. Oh, Lapsovich gets up on that treacherous high lane, and he's going to lose one, maybe two spots. Slides up the groove into the light gray area of the racetrack. No traction up there. He slides back a couple, and now here comes Beauchamp underneath the Dickies Dodge of Dave Whitlock. So Beauchamp saw the opening, and he went for it. So that'll put the 60 Mopar Dodge up in a fourth. No sooner did Dave Whitlock got down the bottom and got underneath the 23, brought the 60 with him, and he overcooks the corner, and he loses the spot to Beauchamp. Dave Whitlock's teammate is out of the race, and Todd standing by with him. Todd? Mark Dilley, you look to have a car that could compete up front today, but behind the wall and done now. What happened? Uh, I think the motor let go. It just started to burn up. I think it was burn up inside. Tough break. We've been fast all year. You know, lead races, get up front, but just can't get no luck. Hopefully it'll turn around. Hoping that a trip out west helps Mark Dilley. Well, Dilley and company, they've been having a hard time with motors in that camp this year. Don Thompson Jr. getting some advice from Sandy Hamill, his crew chief, telling him that that's the leaders coming, and we got trouble in front of Thompson. See, Thompson was putting the leaders by, that's Kent Noon in the 18, he pulls up right behind him, Cochin's gonna fly. Obviously, these two cars stop down in turn number three. So Noon had come to a rest, and then Thompson came to a rest up behind him. Thompson's fled the scene, but and Newt's going to need a push from the Wheel and Engineering Safety Team as your leader, Scott Steckley, comes down pit lane. What a great move by his crew chief. He got him track position after his penalty. Now he's on pit road. Defending series champion makes his scheduled pit stop, tosses the water bottles out the left-hand side. Crew chief Greg Gibson is changing the right rear tire. They'll change the right sides. They will make a fuel stop as well and send it back out to complete this event. There is Jeff Lapsovich as well, coming down for some right side tires. Very much needed on that 23 car. John Gaunt from Barry, Ontario, your new leader. 
there's no secret to what makes a beautiful room. It's the right design and the perfect colors, colors that reflect who you are. Rich, luxurious colors specifically designed to remain beautiful for years. Designer series paint with ceramic microspheres is more scrubbable, more stain resistant, more durable. For fabulous results, use premium designer series paint by Beauty Tone. Colors for living. Hardware and Home Hardware Building Center. We torture tested two cars to prove a point about maximum horsepower. The black car with Castrol Syntec, the red, the leading conventional oil. In torture tests, Castrol Syntec 5W30 maintained maximum horsepower longer. Conventional oil got smoked. Don't you use conventional oil? <coughs> Not anymore. Want more proof? Go to CastrolSyntec.com. It's more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. It's the world's biggest tailgate party, I gotta tell you. Have a great time, see all the favorite drivers. And heard those cars go by, I was like, oh, wow, that's so awesome. Thunderous roar. <laughs> My vacation once a year. When you're with friends, it's always good memory. Welcome back to the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series from saint Eustache, Quebec. This is the Tide 250. The number 12 high-tech drilling Dodge leads the 17 of DJ Kennington to Sean Gibbs. Gets ready to throw the green flag for the eighth time here today on lap 151. And the green flag's up. We're back underway. I hear him up through the gearbox again. DJ Kennington out that treacherous outside lane. Now he's doing a lot better outside of John Dodd that time. Side by side in the turn three. John Dodd, you see the damage from earlier after he spun in turn number two and took a knock from the 21 of Jason White. Just caught the rear bumper cover. It doesn't appear to affect the handling of that car. It's still a rocket ship as the high-tech well drilling number 12 of Gunn still in the front. Real smooth, DJ Kennington into turn three. You get a good look at once more about how well that car is handled. I gotta believe DJ is just by this time running second. Kennington leading the Mopar Dodge of Ron Beauchamp Jr. Dave Whitlock in the 39 running in fourth spot. And the 0-2 of Gary Mix takes a look underneath the five of Andre Corsol. That's for a position inside the top 10. Lapsovich going to make that move as well. So Lapsovich and Scott Steckley, after just making their pit stops, are starting to work back up through the field. Well, Scott Steckley, whoa, we're under caution once more at St. Eustache. Well, the 97 into the backstretch wall. That is Hugo Vanini in Rapogne, Quebec. We just watched the car just really had a bad push off the corner. <laughs> had the wheel cranked all the way left. He bounced off the, the right door of another car and head first in the backstretch wall. Serious damage to the 97. That's what happens when it push, 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 and then it goes loose all of a sudden. So we'll get set for another restart here with John Gott, DJ Kennington leading things back to green. Ron Beauchamp Jr., Andrew Ranger sitting third and fourth. The cars lined up two by two as they roll off a corner four. The green flag waves again, and we're back underway. Oh, Ranger spun the wheels real hard off the corner. Mixie jumped down the bottom. Look at this off a of turn two. Mixie gets a rocket ship off the bottom. Still hanging on the outside. Ranger takes a tank slapper going into quarter number three. He's on the front end. Go to the inside, back out to the outside. Johnny Gott getting the all clear signal from his spotter. Doing a great job. Look at Kerry Mix, nothing great. Right around the bottom, the 27's out that slippery outside groove. You saw a quick flash of the five car of Andre Corsol and the CarQuest Chevrolet. Corsol having a pretty decent run, sticking inside the top 10 pretty much all afternoon here. Start to see these soft sprung and big sway bar cars now, Dave. They, they really are forgiving on corner entrance. You see the cars move. Watch this. DJ's car hammers down into the racetrack, but under braking, oh, oh, oh. this is what happens. They get a little bit loose on corner entrance because they transfer all the weight to the front tires. But the 0-2 of Gary Mix and the BDI Ford Fusion goes around. We have seen a number of cars get loose. No caution as Sean Gams keeps that caution in his pocket. So Gary Mix will have to get on his horse. You can see the leader is entering turn number three, and there goes the 23 of Jeff Lapsovich up into the turn three wall. So possibly some oil down 
In turn three, as that's now two cars in trouble in that corner in successive laps. Oh, well, we got to think maybe some fluid out of the 97 car. A lot of damage on the 23 laps pitch. Hard break for that team, but elation so far for the 12 as John Gunn continues to lead. This TSN program is presented in high definition television by JVC. JVC HD, the perfect experience. There's no secret to what makes a beautiful room. It's the right design and the perfect colors. Colors that reflect who you are. Rich, luxurious colors specifically designed to remain beautiful for years. Designer series paint with ceramic microspheres is more scrubbable, more stain resistant, more durable. For fabulous results, use premium designer series paint by Beauty Tone. Colors for living. Oh, owners, help me, homeowners. Only at Home Hardware and Home Hardware Building Center. around the world cover our good name with dirt, dust, paint, oil, grease, and mud. And you know what? We're fine with that. Dickies, a legend in work. You are watching the 2009 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series on TSN. Barry Ontario's John Gunn and his Gord Coates old high-tech drilling Dodge leads the time 250 here on lap 172 as we go back to green. Back up through the gearbox one more time down into turn one. DJ's hanging tough on the outside. Jason Hathaway in the three car up to fourth spot after earlier troubles this race. He looped it up in two, but that team has been making steady progress up towards the front once again. Caught that high group, but it doesn't appear to be as good as the low group. Here is oh, DJ Kennington forces his way down low. Uh, DJ was trying to muscle in front of his Dodge buddy there, Beauchamp. Beauchamp wasn't going to give him any quarter, and he's going to force him up high and try and steal the spot. Beauchamp can't really afford to play too, you know, badly here. He is your points leader, so he's got to keep his nose clean and stay in this top five if he wants to keep the lead in the Castro points chase. Here comes the rocket ship. Look at this 22 car reel of all in. That thing's going around the bottom of the hook like it's on rails. My, that car is, watch this, right on the bottom. Flying the nose down the straightaway, making horsepower. Look at that, two car lengths down the front stretch. Andrew Ranger a little loose as he tries to keep up with last year's champion. Loses the 60 as well of Ron Beauchamp Jr. DJ Kennington can't capitalize. And you heard it, the 12 car is pulling away from this battle for a second. All the while, though, work continues in the Tim Hortons pit. Todd? There you see the damage to the number 23 Tim Horton Chevrolet of Jeff Lapsovich. Jeff, we saw you go around. Give us the play-by-play -play of what happened from your seat. I don't know. You know, it was totally unexpected. The thing just stepped out for me and then ran into the wall backwards. And, you know, and end our day, um, it's unfortunate. I think it happened to carry about a lap before. There, I, I, I suspect there was oil on the track. Uh, why they didn't throw the caution, I don't understand. But uh, um, I know we had a really good run going. It's frustrating. These guys worked really hard, and that Tim Horton Chevy was just. I think. I think we were gonna put it on the podium. It's. It's, un, it's unfortunate. Tough day for Jeff Lapsovich. We'll see him next in round number eight when the series returns to most sport. Oh, tough day for sure. Last time they were here, they took that car home wrecked as well. He's a good competitor, and he had a good run and go in here today. And we had talked about oil or fluid out of the 97 car when he crashed down the backstretch, Dave. And we do have a new leader, and it's a 60 Mopar Dodge of Ron Beauchamp Jr. He's going to bring the 17 of Kennington with him. And that is John Gunn spotter telling him he's clear John down Gunn. low, so he'll pop into fourth spot. Boy, a driver's best friend is that spotter. That was real good communication to get Johnny back down the bottom because we've been watching this all night long. The bottom is the fastest way around. Young Hanson's doing a great job. He's currently 12th in that DJ Kennington prepared automobile. Yeah, you remember just one race ago in most sport, the prime champ Dodge 
was absolutely obliterated. That car went home in a tiny little box after Joey Hansen had a horrific crash in turn number eight. He was okay, able to make the start here at St. Astache. He's running in 12th position, so doing a bang up job for sure. Dave Whitlock gets down the bottom to take a spot away from Jason Hathaway in the three. Six spot in now, the hands of Dave Whitlock is Jason Hathaway will pull the snap on tools. Dodge Avenger to the back bumper of the 39 Whitlock Dodge. As the driver's just kind of settling into a rhythm here in the late going of the tide, 250. There's DJ Carrington trying to hold off Scott Steckley, but how long will that last as Steckley pace that car to the inside and around he goes for second. Wow, that didn't take long at all. Charlie Hustle, Scott Steckley's got that thing just glued to the bottom of the racetrack, and he takes that spot with no effort whatsoever. I think that's the first time the Castrol Dodge has slid sideways all afternoon, and it may have been a bump on the 12 of John Gunn as he saw that hole, and he says, wait, wait, don't close it up just yet. I'm coming through. Now it's good to watch. Watch those cars go on the straightaway side by side. Both those cars have Kennington power plants in them. And both are moving down the straightaway at a decent clip. Andrew Ranger, don't count on him. A big problem, though, on the back stretch. Caution, flag flies this time. White in the 21. There's a four of Don Thompson Jr. And the 99 of Derek White also involved. We'll take another look. Well, the action's already started with the 99 before Don Thompson even gets there. But the 21 not having a very good outing here today. Joey Hansen in some damage to the nose of the 40 as we take a look at the Mopar Quick 3. Top three on the racetrack are the top three fastest Mopars so far here in the Tide 250 as we get set for the restart. Ron Beauchamp Jr. and Scott Steckley side by side at a quarter number four. They're looking for that cone on the fence. We're looking for the green flag and there it goes. Scott Steckley laid back on that restart. He certainly wasn't going to make that mistake again like he did early on. He's got the strongest car. Let's see how good it is on the outside. Beauchamp takes him deep into turn three. Steckley's got the spot. What a machine. Oh, here's Beauchamp fighting back. Beauchamp got up and actually touched the 22 of Steckley, but that car far too strong as your Castro points leader, Beauchamp, will slot into second spot. Last year's champion, Steckley, who remember back at the beginning of this race had that black flag, the drive through penalty. He didn't go a lap down, but now he's all the way back in front again. Kerry Mix, he's also got back up into the top 10 after he got spin out in turn three under green flag as well. Kerry having a good run as well. And Beauchamp goes for a slide out in the second group. He gathers it back up, but not before losing two positions. John Gunn, DJ Kennington getting through. Oh, you got to wonder if maybe Beauchamp's starting to burn the right rear off and get loose up off the corner, or maybe him and Gunn got together. Don't know, didn't see the incident at the time, but certainly a very loose race car. Well, we'll take another look at it. It looks like he just got loose on his own. Gunn went through, and Beauchamp very lucky not to get into the 17 of DJ Kennington, so he's able to keep going. Now in fourth, here comes Mix, though, in the 0-2. Now up to fifth spot after getting underneath the 27. Walmart time for Fusion of Andrew Ranger. Kerry Mix definitely got the bit in his mouth and charging back to the front. That is Susan Mix, co-owner and spotter for Kerry Mix. Tell him he's the fastest car in a racetrack. And I'll tell you what, I've raced against him a long time. When he gets spun out, he puts the bit in his mouth and gets back to the front. And remember, he's got one of them spec engines under the hood. A little less horsepower, maybe. And when this track starts to slick up, he won't be spinning the tires off the corner. He's not spinning them at all, but he almost spins out of the 60. Ron Beauchamp Jr. as they got together, coming off of corner number two. Beauchamp gathers it back up as they race side by side down the front. Shoot. Kerry gives him lots of room off a of turn four. Oh, a lap car there on the bottom. Ronnie gets pushed up into that slick outside lane. Mixie got the spot off a of two. So Beauchamp drops another position and now chasing the VDI Ford Fusion of Kerry Mix and they get together. Mix goes around off the corner number four. Beauchamp may have gotten into him. Caution flag flies this time as Mix grabs it here and heads in the right direction. We'll have to take another look at this. Down into turn three, coming off of turn four, and 60, Ron Beauchamp Jr. just punts the 0-2 around. So Mix goes around. He'll have his work cut out for him. Coming through the field once again, it's going to be fun to watch. The 22 of Scott Stackley continues to lead. We're getting near the end. 
there's no secret to what makes a beautiful room. It's the right design and the perfect colors, colors that reflect who you are. Rich, luxurious colors specifically designed to remain beautiful for years. Designer series paint with ceramic microspheres is more scrubbable, more stain resistant, more durable. For fabulous results, use premium designer series paint by Beauty Tone. Colors for living. Oh, owners, help me, homeowners. Only at Home Hardware and Home Hardware Building Center. except Ron Beauchamp Jr., the Mopar Parts Dodge Along Pit Road being held for aggressive driving. He is anxious to get going, but the NASCAR official won't release him until the leader goes by and he goes down a lap. Well, what a tough break for our points there, Ron Beauchamp Jr. Just overzealous, you know, heat of the moment stuff. Him and Mixie got to rub it. You know what? He had to pay the penalty. Yeah, but no doubt he wasn't happy about that. You saw how he came into his pit box as Ron Beauchamp Jr. will try to get back up through the field as Jonathan Bullrett. 41 goes around, he lights up the back tires and caution flag flies. Bobrat trying to avoid that caution here in the late going in the tie 250, but can't quite do it. Have another look. Well, he got stuck out in the outside. The three gets underneath. He closed the door and the 19 and Brad Gray was there and he went around off the front bumper. Guy to have a pretty good run though, Bobrat in the 41. Hopefully we'll be able to see him a couple more times here in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series as we get set for restart number 11 here on lap 244. Steckley and DJ Kennington on the front row. The green flag waves and we're off. Up through the gearbox. This is DJ's shot. He's got to get that thing around the outside. Try and pull that 22 down the back stretch. The 22's got the inside line. He's got the spot. Here comes Johnny Gunn down the inside. They touch going to turn three. Boy, Gunn tried to fill that hole, but Kennington came down hard and protected seconds. One, five laps to go now. Steckley, your leader, Kennington, gone. And Ranger, your top four. Here comes Kennington to the inside. DJ Kennington, once he gets heat in the tires, he can stick with that 22. The 22 is Steckley. He's been the fastest car all night long. But look at that 17 come on. DJ knows there's blood in the water. Five laps to go. You got to get it done. Whitlock loose off a of four. Gary Exel coming back up through the field in that BDI Ford Fusion to the inside of the 19. Now looking down low on the 39 of Dean Whitlock. Down into turn three. Lots of action around here. Mix trying to get back to the front. Then the 17 of DJ Kennington trying to catch that guy, Scott Stegley, for the lead. And the 12 of John got losing touch with the leaders just a little bit as DJ Kennington tries to back up the corner a little bit. Tries for a run on the 22, and Stegley got a little loose on corner entry. I've been watching the 17 all night long, and he's been very quiet on the steering wheel. Now watch him turn the corner. He's definitely faster in the middle of the corner than the 22. He's just got to get an opening and get the nose underneath him and force him to the outside. Rangers all over what's left of that black bumper of the high-tech well drilling number 12 of John Gunn as we hit the white flag lap. One more lap to go for last year's champion, Scott Steckley, looking for his first win here in 2009. DJ Kennington looking for win number two. Can he do it through three and four for the final time? He wiggles a little bit. It's going to be Steckley off of four. Scott Steckley will take the win in the tie 250. Johnny Gott, what a great showing for him tonight. Not running the whole series and finishing on the podium tonight in St. Eustache. Andrew Ranger and Dave Whitlock round out the top five as the crews celebrate down on pit lane. There's a little tire up by the 17 of TJ Kennington. We'll be back for victory lane.
the red, the leading conventional oil. In torture tests, Castrol Syntec 5W30 maintained maximum horsepower longer. Conventional oil got smoked. Don't you use conventional oil? <coughs> Not anymore. Want more proof? Go to CastrolSyntec.com. It's more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. Catch the CFL Live from Montreal, Thursday on TSN. Welcome back to the Autodrome St. Eustache. Scott Steckley is climbing out of that number 22 tow truck in a box car and waving that checkered flag for the first time with Canadian Tire on the car as well. Scott Steckley, you had a strong car today. You recovered from that drive-through penalty, and it seemed that once you took the lead late in the race, nobody was going to catch you. Yeah, the car was great. Uh, I just got to thank Canadian Tire, tow truck in a box. All my crew, uh, we wanted to win so bad for Canadian Tire. Uh, we did it in our fourth race. So that's great. Um, my family, crew, everybody does so much. All the fans for coming here. You get the Canadian tire car in the <laughs> victory lane's awesome. Big smile on the face of Scott Steckley, his first win for Canadian tire this season. And we'll take a look at the rest of the top 10 here in St. Estache. Good run being put in today by Kerry Mix. Came back for sixth position, but how about Andre Corsall and rookie Joey Hansen finishing ninth and 10th here today. Todd is down with your second place finisher. Podium finish for DJ Kennington in the Castrol Mahindra Dodge. It looked like you might have had something for Scott Steckley, but maybe not enough laughs at the end. Yeah, I don't know. I think the longer it went, the Castrol Mahindra Dodge got a little bit squirrely on me. So we were tight in the middle, losing.